the disappearance of rice gum. Who remembers rice gum? Don't even count. I know everybody in here remembers rice gum. Everybody had like a rice gum phase. I was probably like 16 in the rice gum days. I wasn't like a huge fan, but like I found him through Phase Rug, through like their one of their 1v1s. I'd say I was like a casual viewer, but he just like doesn't post shit now. So let's see what happened to him. Rice gum is the perfect example of how broken promises, scummy behavior, and clout chasing can kill a channel. Considering that it's been over two years since Rice Gum's last upload, it's more than safe to say that his channel is dead. But how did he fall off so hard? And what on earth is he doing these days? I don't know if you can consider it a fall off though. I feel like he cho like I I'd say retire. Like I feel like Rice Gum retired. He would have he would have fallen off by now a little bit, but he just doesn't really upload, right? I felt like he chose to just like lay low, you know? Like he made so much money that I felt like he just chose to like chill. In this video, we'll be uncovering the truth behind his disappearance. Rice Gum's rise to fame started in 2015. With humble beginnings in the React personality niche, he seemed like a pretty relatable and reasonable dude who would spend his free time reacting to videos in his bedroom. On the 21st of October, Rice would go on to post his first viral video, with a video titled, Are These Kissing Pranks Fake? A video that would go on to gain over 2 million views by answering the question that everyone had on their minds at the time. Rock, paper, scissors. Damn, she put scissors, just fucking put... Paper. You know what? No, I wouldn't forget the game. What? <laughs> he lost. Bro, he didn't even win. And look. What? Okay, this what? Is her parents <laughs> or her grandparents or whatever. And with comments such as, to be honest. Wait, who was this? Who's that guy? What, what channel was this on? Prank Invasion? And with comments such as, to be honest, I would love to be his friend. He seems really chill. It was evident that Ricegum's friendly and humorous personality was keeping his viewers engaged with the content. Ricegum would write off the success of the kissing prank video up until the 9th of December, when he would post the video that would change everything. You know how creators seem to have a downward spiral these days? Well, there's also such thing as an upward spiral. And the video titled These Kids Must Be Stopped would mark the beginning of it. Yo, what is up guys? Your boy Rice going back for another video and before I want to start what I want to talk about about this video I just want to say my last video got 900 comments and I was reading through all of them Once again, I read all comments and a lot of the comments were just like Rice Gum, do more man Keep going. These are funny and you know just all these positive comments I just want to say thank you cuz uh yeah Rice Gum has not uploaded in two years his recent video has 3.3 mil, other one 1.6 mil. None of them are under 1.5 mil. And obviously you can argue, oh, well, he used to get 10 mil. But like, bro, that's not a fall off if you used to get 10 mil and now you only get three. Like 3 million views for 10 million subs is a great ratio. He just doesn't upload and was also working very hard to keep them entertained with regular content. And within just a couple of weeks, Ricegum would reach a total of 50,000 subscribers. What is up guys, your boy Rice Gum back for another video and today is crazy. We hit 50,000 subscribers on YouTube. Whole oh. No, I'm just kidding. But guys, thank you. I don't wait, okay, wait, wait, wait. I didn't know that was just like a he does have like a, a persona though. I was just about to say, like, I wonder if his like internet persona was calculated from the beginning. I think over time he slowly started like adding that uh that character you know videos titled x must be stopped would quickly become a viral staple in the channel leading him to the rapid growth all the way up to 1 million subscribers those were Throughout huge videos, that Rice series was, was huge implementing diss tracks at the end short skits at him and his imaginary character afro gum would create in order to roast his targets the hottest diss track of 2016 it's time Looking, 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 looking. If you don't know the story, yeah, I'm here to tell ya. Okay. Taylor tried to shut my YouTube down, he was jealous. Boy, Whoa. you need to keep a shirt on, got nothing to flex. How long does it take for food to travel down your neck? I used to use some of his like diss tracks in my vlogs back in like what 2016. No, okay. They got a little better over the years. I was never like a like a rice gum fan, but he was always good at like adapting his content, you know. And he's the one that kind of started the like diss track trend, which like stuck around for a few years. I feel like he could still be like a big YouTuber to this day if he wanted to. I mean, this video isn't called the fall off, you know. It's the disappearance. Like, I want to know what the fuck he's up to now. Went from vines to try. Or someone in chat said that he he manages OnlyFans girls. 
Is that for real? Rap, you should probably go back. Stop it. A Lambo, you could have paid your songs to not be trash. Oh my god. Looking for your talent, couldn't Rice would ultimately get so many offers when he diss tracks, the creators would actually start fearing and making one on them. And things were going pretty well until Rice found himself getting indirectly called out in a tweet from popular Viner, Gabby Hanna. It says if your entire channel is built on the name oh, of other people, remember the, users remember the whole research engine results, conflict with I that? don't respect your channel. And, you know, at this point, I'm like, who could she possibly be talking about? I mean, it doesn't ring a bell. I don't know who she's talking about. So then I DM her saying, hey, man, just at me next time. I'm pretty sure that tweet was about me. Just at me next time. And she said, then honestly, that's your own insecurity about it. Never assume what someone means. My tweets have never been and never will be directed at a single person. You may very well fall into this category, but that tweet wasn't with you in particular in mind, right? And what she's trying to say is, you know, RiceGum, your channel may fall in the category as I don't respect you, but that tweet wasn't about you. Damn it, guys, it's pretty clear that the Gabby show doesn't respect the channel, man. I mean, she just can't respect our channel, man. Like, what am I gonna do? But since she wants to judge our whole entire- So what did RiceGum do to gain the respect from Gabby? Well, he made a diss track on her. I miss the old YouTube, bro. I miss the old YouTube. Like, I don't know. Even just watching this, like I, like I said, I don't watch he like hella of his videos. But just like the the twenty, the twenty like fourteen to twenty seventeen YouTube, it was, just, it was just an era, bro. Like it was much more simple too. There was a lot more people just sitting at their desks, and they were like the big YouTubers, you know. Now it's like all the huge scaled like teams, which is still cool in its own way, but like. I don't know. Like YouTube's fucking huge now. Like a lot of YouTubers think that to to get big on the platform, you have to have like a whole production team. Whereas like back then, it was just like a dude in his room on, at his desk with a camera. You know. I know there's still plenty of YouTubers like that that are killing it in their in their niche community, or whatever. But like these were like the big YouTubers. Yeah, PewDiePie. Shout out PewDiePie. You had the sub tweet, try to keep it on the low. Like if the fans didn't add me, I wouldn't know. I pass you in subs because you're struggling to grow. I don't think there's anything bigger than your nose. Damn. Oh, you're so big, can you please tell us? You're not Dude, funny. The J yes, bro. The cousins fishing. Yes. The Jake Paul and Rice Gum diss battle. That era was like, bro. I, I don't know. That was the that was the golden era, bro. The whole clout house shit with like Faze Banks, Alyssa, and, and Rice got like all that shit was going on, bro. That was like the the end of like the good era. The years before that were fine too. Put some respect, stop playing with my name. You talk about click, but even though you do the same, your vines and your videos are. Rap Master, thank you so much for the 199. Sorry I missed it. Have you ever skated in Albuquerque? I have not. Fucking trash. Next time, have the buzzer to me with an app. Against all odds, it wouldn't be long before Rice and Gabby would actually cross paths. As Gabby confronted Rice at a YouTube party where she would claim that Rice beat her and smashed her phone. This was insane. I just challenged you to a live battle on Snapchat. Would you do it? Listen, no. Live rap battle. Why wouldn't you do it? No, I don't want to. Alright, so Rice is going to have a smoke trader today. It's fine. I think we can still battle. Look at her good. Why was she bugging him so much? Like, get off his dick, bro. He played it cool the first time, you know? When Like, when she shows the camera in his face, he's just like, eh, uh, like, you know. But now she's, like, begging for a reaction. Okay, so update. Sorry about listening. I'm crying. Um, Rice Gump didn't think that joke was very funny, and he hit me in the middle of a party and shattered my phone. I can show you that in a sec. I'm standing out on the balcony so that it doesn't, like, make a scene. But, like... He literally, like, everybody was like, did he hit you? And I was like, yeah, he did. And my phone is broken, the screen is broken, the back camera is broken. So I need to get a new phone. This was the um, biggest cab, bro. I mean, he did he did break her phone, I think, right? And then he, like, felt bad and bought her a new one. I don't remember the details. He'll probably say Here is my pop socket in my hand um, that fell off when he shattered my phone. It's broken. Sad, I just made this. I don't know. I guess my biggest thing is she had the whole the internet against this one. Where you're making fun of somebody, you can't take a joke. Like, let me get this straight. You say I'm a big nose. I'm ugly. I'm a hypocrite. I steal all my content. I'm like all these horrible things. My voice is annoying. But I make a joke about your scandal and you hit me and break my. He shattered my screen and he broke my back camera. So honestly, I'm so ready for a Venmo. And I hate to be like joking. Not even joking. Like honestly, I want him to pay for my fucking phone. Even if I was 
making up everything about him hitting me and twisting my arm, like all that, even if that was all a lie, even if he didn't touch me, he damaged my property because of what? Why would she even bring that up? Even if I'm making this part up, he still broke my phone. Like, why, why would you even bring that up if it wasn't Cap, you know? Like, this is the night it happened. He threw my phone enough to break the case. I'll show you when I get home. The back camera shattered. The pop socket's in my pocket, like, broken in half. The plastic shattered, like... With word getting around that Rice was an alleged woman beater, he would defend his innocence in a video titled The Gabby Show Lied About Being Abused. Her down, he's scratching her. Also, immediately after the incident, she took a picture of her leg and there was a bruise and everyone thought I gave her that bruise. Like, clearly, everyone is assuming that bruise is because of me. But we later find out that she had those bruises before the incident, so there's no way possible for me to give it to her if she already had the bruises so we caught her in a lie and now she's over here switching up her story again she's saying that she took a snapchat trying to show off a scratch on her leg not the bruises i'm trying to show off the scratches on my leg and she draws an arrow in the twitter how come you didn't draw the arrow in the snapchat it would have took 10 seconds it would have cleared up so much confusion and then i re watch it and there was literally no like how can bruises from a while ago look more severe than a fresh scratch this is so obvious that she's doing this for attention because i remember when i smashed her phone i just left and on my way home i was in the uber she was already on snapchat ranting showing bruises crying it didn't even take 20 minutes after the incident she's already making it public that next morning she posts a 15 minute video crying showing fakes rice gum even finished off the video with a diss track we would go deep in with insulting her. Phone in my face, now her screen cracked. Bitch really tried to make a move. She playing games like 2K, but I spent that on my sweater too. Risk looking like the 50 bands from that last diss that I did on you. Even though Rice could have been considered wrong in the situation, his sheer popularity would allow him to get away with it, making it almost like he was untouchable. I feel like if she would have just stuck to one story and been like, yo, he grabbed my phone aggressively and broke it, which was, like, the true part. Like, he, he would have got some shit and then, like, wouldn't have been able to make this diss track, you know? Like, it wouldn't have looked good on him to make this diss track, like, if he was in the wrong. It seems kind of fucked up to break someone's phone just because they filmed you at, like, a public gathering. But, yeah, yeah, like, with her switching her story and getting caught in lies, then everyone's just like, oh, now, now you're goofy, you know? Like, now we don't even give a fuck that he broke your shit. Do I think he was in the wrong? I feel like she shouldn't have been bugging him so much. Like, she was asking for something, you know? I'm not saying... He shouldn't have done it. A little, little crazy. Not crazy, but you know. I don't know I don't know what I would have done, is what I'm saying. Rice began letting the clout get to his head, transforming him from the level-headed humble creator all the way into the braggadocious and arrogant personality we all know him for today. Around the time, a credit known as Idubs was popping off in the YouTube scene. With a video series called Content Cup, Idubs would call out and expose scummy behavior in the YouTube community. At the time, he had just uploaded the viral Content Cup on Leafy Is Here, a notorious commentary channel who was going viral at Yo, the time. Yo, Idubs would not last in today's society. The internet is so soft now. Idubs would not last, bro. And that's kind of sad because, like, I used to fuck with Idubs. Idubs used to say some crazy. Idubs would just throw out the N word, hard R, because he, like, his whole thing was like, you know, context is everything. You know, he, he's like, no words should be off limits. Like, I should be able to just say this as long as I'm not saying it like racist. So, like, he would just throw that shit. Yo, like, he would not. Like, okay, there was lighter shit. I'm not saying, like, oh, you should just be able to go throw that shit around. I'm just saying, like, there's other shit that, like, would not even slide on the internet today. But I guess if, like, you're someone like him who's just unapologetic and, and you just, like, don't apologize for being yourself or whatever, then I guess, like, I guess you can last. But I feel like YouTube would have, like, done some shit. And it almost seemed like Ricegum wanted a piece of the pie, practically making a video I'm not gonna shave Marcella. to make a content cop on him. Honestly, it oh, my God. What? Brian, you should do a stream where you help viewers riz up on Insta. A bunch of my viewers are like 15, 16. If I'm helping them riz up another 16 year old girl, that sounds so fing insane. If you were to make one on me, what would he say? He would be like, oh, Rice Gum bullies people. I'm gonna show him a lesson. He'll roast my appearance, whatever. He'll probably bring up some old pictures of me from way back then when I looked weird. I still look weird. Maybe at the end he might squeeze a diss track in there to show people that he can, you know, you know, give me a taste of my own medicine. Who knows? Bottom line, what I'm trying to say is I'm next, guys. I'm next on the hit list. And if I'm not next, then I'm probably next next. But guess what? I'm not leafy. You, you can't just hide, hide for months and make a 20 minute video and randomly, no one even knows and surprise everyone. Those content cops did some damage, bro. Guess what? 
I'm ready. And if you do do that, bro, if you do drop a video on me, I swear to God, I'm dropping the best diss track ever. And that's on my... Even with Ricegomber's massive personality change now that he had money, he would still pull in millions of views on each upload, which inevitably would add fuel to the fire, as his ego just grew and grew. It wouldn't be long before Rice was ultimately humbled after posting a video titled Why I Left the Content House, a video where he would travel to Hong Kong and be incredibly disrespectful towards the locals, even going as far as forcing an old man to eat an ice cream that was already half eaten. Can you eat this for my friend? Please, please, please. For you. Thank you. Good, thank eat it, eat it. I'm, I'm, I'm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, we pull up the pizza. And hey, you know who Rice Gum is? And hey, you fuck with Rice Gum? And hey, you fuck with Rice Gum? Oh, I'm about to try it. Five out of ten. Oh, you guys have a uh, thought here? Thoughts? I don't understand. It wouldn't be long before the video would get reported enough times they'd be removed for violating YouTube's harassment guidelines. Rascom would post a video oh, they got to justify take his actions. A comment from viewer Gian Franco summarized the reception of the video quite well. This guy's moral compass is so broken, how he justifies his actions boggles my mind. It would only be a matter of time before Rascom's predictions would come true, as on the 4th of October 2017, Idols would post a content cop on Rice, a video that would go on to gain over 52 million views and would mark the beginning of the end for Rascom. There were so many people in the video that I was like, who the fuck, like, who are these people? You are so stupid that you don't even realize that that question could be asked of you in a matter of years. I guess you should just hope that future relevant YouTubers aren't as mentally deficient as you. Idubs would end the video with a diss track that featured the appearance of PewDiePie as well as Ethan Klein. Yo, gifted hater is the Idubs of skating. <laughs> You're fucking delusional, so try your best to remember. You are not a pimp, you're a borderline sex offender. This boy a flavor of the month, but which is it, huh? Oh, I remember this fool pissing me off when I watched this. Yeah, the beat's pretty trash. I, I don't know why this fool pissed me off when I watched this diss track back then. How can you claim that shit when you're too scared to go in on beauty pie? Little hoe, little bitch, suck my 5.3 inch dick. And my scum would reply to the video with a diss track of his own titled Frick the Police. But with his video having over 1.4 million dislikes, it was obviously the real winner was. A 30 minute vid, this is the one I used. I used this diss track in a song. I think I used two, I used this one for the memes. Look like your sister is the girl that you have sex with. Uh, yeah, do you get the message on Twitter thread rape? We should get this guy arrested. But I'm flexing. Can you get these sheep out my mentions? How can I be mad, bitch? I sleep in a mansion. Try to hold me back, but I keep on advancing when I'm looking at his head. Ooh, that shit's so gigantic. I'm coming still, bitch. My pockets feel a hundred bills. I'm in the hills, bitch. My soldiers did a hundred mil. They're telling me to stop flexing, but I'm starting still. With Rice's reputation in the rapid decline, a video was posted on the 1st of January 2019 that would act as a straw that broke the camel's back. The video was titled How I Got Airpods for $4 and was a sponsored video of Rice Gun promoting a loot box style website. But the ad itself was incredibly deceptive. Oh, I heard it about this. It viewers to use the site for profit when in reality, the site was closer to a scam than a legitimate fair game. Yo, I Damn, YouTubers been scamming, bro. Imagine I scammed you guys. He had to know that like this was gonna fuck up a little bit of his reputation. Like how big was the bag, you know what I mean? So like, there's an option to sell it back to get the money. So like there's no losing in this. Cause even if you get an item that you don't like, you just sell it back. Here we go. Hey guys, so I sold it back for like a thousand, which is so weird because I bought a hundred dollar box, but I got a thousand dollar shoe out of it. So I got some. Someone said, would you for one mil? Yeah, sorry gang. <laughs> nah, I feel like if it was like a light, light ad for one mil like bro i'm doing that shit and i'm giving back to you fuckers like 100k that sounds like a fair trade because none of you fuckers are gonna lose 100k on some little fucking scam like that with like shoes or yeezys or whatever the fuck this is what i would do i'm offered one mil right i do the quick little ad and then i hop on stream and be like guys don't don't do that shit it's a skit like it's not you're not gonna you're gonna lose your money i hop on here immediately after posting the ad and being like guys everyone go to everyone go to the comments and say scam scam like everyone warn everybody that'd be that'd be like so against the contract though but that'd be funny i spent 
four dollars for this yo i just finessed the website four dollar airpods i'm not even gonna sell it back i'm gonna ship this to my house right now the video proved to his audience how ready he was to sell it to scammy sites in order to make a quick buck which was shocking in contrast to his old humble personality where he thanked his viewers and respected his viewer base when things seemed like they couldn't get any worse they did as h3h3 productions would post a video calling out rice for his dodgy sponsor he look like he came up there this has got to be one of the worst things I've seen on YouTube, simply because his fans are so young and so impressionable that, I mean, there's a reason you need to be 21 years old to gamble, because you need to know what you're doing. It's a dangerous, it's addicting, it's a very, it's a vice, right? It's a, it's a real vice. Many lives have been ruined due to gambling addiction. Ryskin was ultimately forced into a corner and posted the video calling others out for doing the same thing and finally apologizing at the end. True, it's true, I'm an asshole. Like, what was I thinking? Like, I can't really do much because I already did it. The damage has been done. You guys already saw a money hungry side of me and it is what it is. And there's nothing I can really do but say sorry and give you these Amazon gift cards. So I'm sorry, it just wouldn't happen again. Amazon this fool, $20. This fool so said sorry with some gift cards. After. Someone said he for sure didn't care. Yeah, nah, I feel like when, when people switch up like that, when, when you start getting that much money, like these creators who blow up and just like forget about their community, they don't they don't care anymore. Um, that's why I almost feel like it's better to have a small community that you're close with, like like me with you guys, you know. Rice got greedy and snapped back again with a second video titled "This YouTuber is Lying to You," a video where Rice would notoriously attack Ethan's pregnant wife, Ela therapist or anything and this is like towards the end of the video so a lot of people might not even see this so i'm just gonna say how it is i think this fool is depressed or whatever because his girl be just so whack like i'm sorry <laughs> someone has to say it but like every time oh his girl God. is in a video bro it's just crickets his soldiers go just walk into the house and look through their shit and find guns mono told monica over here <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. i don't know her name but like for real she's just so boring bro and maybe you're just bored of her or she's like surround with some high energy girls because like you probably can i mean you got the money in the clout right at the end of the day anyways man just be happy man like quit roasting on me look guys i'm out i'll see you guys tomorrow with the video having 221,000 dislikes compared to only 109,000 likes it was evident that the youtube community didn't support rice's attempt of pulling down healer for clout but if rice's attitude towards women wasn't reflected badly enough already, a clip from one of Rice's old streams would take the place of one of the worst things you can possibly say to a human being. I told this dude no, I don't want it, and then like I was like drunk, and then yeah, and so that's why I don't really count that. But you know he raped you? Yeah, I mean. But did you I sue could... him and shit or not? No, I didn't because like I he just has a lot of family members. I remember that this were, clip. Like, that were like, oh, and I got bullied like in high school, like I don't know. Yeah, bro. And this and this dude, he raped like hella people. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> no, no, but did it feel good though? No, I didn't. Yeah, it was like how long or like was it? How long? No, like in time of the like how long did like the rape last for? <clears throat> like le like five minutes or less. Oh, okay. So it's not that bad. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't that. It was, I was drunk or whatever, but like, I was just like trying to tell him no and shit. Damn, so guys, if you want to rape her, she won't see you, so. Dude, the fact that that's a real clip is insane. Like, the shit that people be trying to cancel iShow Speed for is no nowhere near that. Like, I feel like he'd say some out of pocket shit like that, but like, bro, th that is crazy. Saying that to like a, like a dead ass victim live. Like, this conversation actually happened. That's insane. I forgot how bad that clip is. I just remember the, did it feel good, though? I don't remember him saying all that. Like, oh, it's not that bad. Guys, if you want to do this, she's like, like, holy shit. He was just... With all his videos getting a high amount of dislikes and negative feedback, he would slowly but surely lose motivation to continue posting. But when he did post, it seemed like the only thing he wanted to talk about was his ex-girlfriend and how luxurious the lifestyle was that he was living. This led up to the 13th of July 2020, when Ryzen would publish his final video on the channel. It's been two years since he last posted, and the feedback from his viewers really reflected on Ryzen's transformation and the negative effects that getting lost in the source can have on someone's career and personality. Damn. From here on out, Ryzen would leave the limelight only returning to make a quick buck from a pump and dump NFT scam known as Save the Kids. A scam that was exposed by CoffeeZilla in 2021. Today we've got- Bro, yep. I felt so bad for Tico in this situation. Like he genuinely seemed like he got f***ed over. He seemed like everybody in his corner was telling him it was good and he genuinely like did not see that they were about to pull it. 
because he showed like his, his proof that he lets all his money in. Like he didn't he didn't pull it. And for those of you that don't under understand like what happened, it, it was a crypto rug pull where they all like buy in, and then as soon as like they promote it and everyone starts you know buying it and it goes up, they pull their money out. Something like that, right? And Tico like took a fat L. Everyone else pretty much got like crazy shit for it. A scam that was exposed by CoffeeZilla in 2021. Today we've got yet another mm, juicy little scam coming from the influencer section of the internet. The biggest scumbag, greedy people on earth who are happy to sell you out for a few bucks. Let's take a look at um, who's going to be doing the scamming today, shall we? It, roll the video. My name's Frazier. My name's Jarvis. I'm Tico. I'm Raisco. I'm Nikon. And I support Save the Kids Token. 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 That's right, ladies and gentlemen, a BEP20 token redistributing wealth to both holders and charities. Actually, it turns out to have just redistributed wealth to the people who got in on the ground floor, AKA these guys. After being exposed for promoting yet another scam, Rice would go awfully silent. And since then, not only have his viewers died down, but he has also lost over 600,000 subscribers. Shout out internet anarchists, bro. 86K? Damn, bro. RIP Rice Gum.